Yes. Yes. All right. Let's take it from the um, BJ. You can read first. We're coming out of the book of the Proverbs. Um, it's all about relationships um, today. That's the um, topic. Um, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, read verse 28 and 29. Okay. We can make our own place, but the Lord gives the right answer. People may be here. Are you on are you on Proverbs chapter 16, son? Set uh, 16 verse 28. It should be saying a, a troublemaker. BJ, yeah. go to Sherry. Sherry at work. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, chapter 16. Uh, okay, 16, go to verse 28. Let me see, show it to me. That's, chat, that's verse 28, go to, yeah, that's verse, wait a minute. Is that the book of Proverbs? Go to the top. Let me see. Okay. 16, chapter 16, not 17. Go back a page. Yeah, chapter 16. Now go to verse 28 on 16. Go back to 16 and go, go to 28. Turn the page. Right where you was where it says sixteen, turn the page. Yeah, that's it right there. Troublemaker. Okay. Twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Uh -huh. A troublemaker. Hang plants, plants, scenes of strife to strife, goats, gossip, gossip, separates, separates the best of friends, and read 29 and then stop at 29. Violet, no, vo violet. Yeah, no, you was right. Violet, violet people miss lead, lead their companion, um, companions, landing, leading, leading them down a harmful, harmful. Path. Path. Amen. Stop right there. Thank you. All right. Thank you for reading that, BJ. So this is, again, the book of Proverbs. We are in talking about self-awareness and relationships. And the writer is King Solomon. He's letting us know a troublemaker plant seeds of strife. What does that mean? Can somebody tell me what he's saying right there? A troublemaker plant seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. You got to know who you're dealing with in these days and times. What is it, What is he saying about a troublemaker plant seeds of strife? Um, from what I'm getting from it, it's like you can walk in a situation being the most positive person, but if you stay around a certain situation, you could be a product of your own environment. So, yes. That's why it's like you have to associate with yourself with certain people because you, it, even if you don't want to or not, their negativity, their even is what eventually attached itself to you. So to that's you. what I'm kind of getting from this. Um, from yeah. That. Yes. And I want everybody to understand the environment that you are living and functioning in day to day. 
it has a whole lot to do with your walk with Christ. It has a whole lot to do with just your life individual, just in in that in the natural, in general. Um, a troublemaker plan sees a strike. Anybody else? Anybody else? Wake up, church. Anybody else have a comment? What what is he saying? Go ahead, Crystal. Um, like uh, a seeds of strife, contradictory. Um, you know, always trying to stir up some mess. Um, yes. you know, like how you be around some family members and they know that you're a believer of God, and they be like, "Oh, well, who wrote the Bible? The yeah. Bible's written by men." You know, mm -hmm. that's stirring up strife because they trying to enter, they trying to lure you into a debate. You know, and you don't mm -hmm. have to debate about Jesus because Jesus said it is finished. Okay, yeah, and he meant, he meant that for for everyone. Okay, yeah. So you don't you don't have to debate but what God has done. You know, so that's mm -hmm. how they do. They try to plant little seeds of discord. You know, mm -hmm. just to get you to come out of, um, you know, your 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 godly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want you to, to return to the flesh so they can say, see, mm -hmm. I thought you was a Christian. Mm -hmm. amen yes and notice he said plant seeds of strife so it's uh, strategically done do y'all see that it's deliberately done they do it on purpose he said plant seeds so they're planting seeds y'all they're deliberately doing that on the, 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 the evil spirit that is you know surrounding them could be in them it could be influencing them don't matter it's still an evil spirit nonetheless okay so it is planting seed a trouble make a plant seeds of strife so it's just like what shakia said and crystal so what is that saying you have to be able to discern who you letting in your life who you letting in your atmosphere who you letting around you day to day Hello, somebody. Wake up, church. Amen. You, know, you cannot Amen. be letting people. That's up to you. That's not up to God. That's up to the child of God to understand what's good in my life and what's bad in my life. What I need to hold on to and what I need to let go. You know, in planting these seeds of strife, it says gossip separates the best of friends. We all know that in high school, grown folk, we know that. Everybody up here done experienced that, I'm sure, before in their life. But my thing is here, i got to bring this home because the Holy Ghost has been telling me, telling me to really focus on this thing. Y'all have to realize that when you hang around people always in the negative, always, and I done said this before, but obviously... I don't know what's going on because he's pressing me to say this again, but in another way, maybe you all didn't really catch it last time, but Holy Spirit is saying that when you allow this negative stuff to constantly negative people around you, negative talking around. Now we're not talking like uh, DP always say control the controller, but we ain't talking about at work. You don't have no choice who's around you at work. But you got a choice when you at home. You got a choice when you, you know, that's why if you can't control your environment where you live at, the odds are you don't need to be living there. Hello, somebody. Amen. You have to be, as a child of God, I don't care where you go, where you live, who you live with. You have to be able to control your environment where you at so that you may be able to function you know, correctly within trying to be a child of God. You got all that stuff around you. And then what happens is, I'm going to tell y'all, a lot of people that is in your life, whether you live with them or whether you friends with them and buddy up with them, people have a lot of unclean spirits mm -hmm. in them and it's surrounding them. And unclean spirits are the worst kind. Why? Because they get you to do things that you think ain't really no big deal. You understand? Um, but it leads to bigger things. Y'all understand that? The Bible said when the unclean spirit leaves the man, it goes to a desert place. It goes to a dry place. When they see ain't nothing popping over there, the Bible said they get seven more evil ones. Y'all heard that? Seven more evil, evil spirits to come your way. So they're dangerous because they go and get the big boys to come to you. Are y'all realizing that? 
So when a person is in your life and they're constantly in your life, now I would say like your best friend, somebody very close to you, and you know they ain't about no good, they ain't about nothing, but you still with them. It's going to affect you. Hello, somebody, wake up, church. Whatever the behavior pattern is, whatever they got, they got going on, because you got to understand the unclean spirits will start affecting you. They will start coming for you. And if they can't get you in one way or another, they go and get more to come. Are y'all hearing me? So yeah. the battle that you're fighting, you're never going to win because it's too much. First of all, you God said you cannot put yourself in harm's way. He tells us in his word, we have to control our environment. Wherever we are, wherever we go, we have to make sure Okay, they doing this over here. Oh, they pro oh no, I ain't gonna go that way. Let me go this way. Oh, they said that over there. What's going on over there? I ain't gonna. But if you're gonna just volunteer, oh, I'm gonna go see what's going on. And they start shooting, you you get shot. You can't blame God for that. Hello? Amen. Is everybody with me? Yes. Amen. It's very vital that y'all understand and just up because. You'll be around these people and these people got unclean spirits and they pop in and jumping off on you. Unclean spirits, unclean spirits. That's what we're talking about today. Unclean. Can somebody tell me what unclean mean? Unclean spirits is um anything that's out of the will of God. Like it's it's just the opposite of what God wants you to do. It's it's spirits that um you know that he talk about that he hate abomination, all kinds of the things that he hate, lying, cheating, stealing, you know, um homosexuality, um, I mean all the sins, everything that's against God is an unclean spirit. Yeah. And and even even in the old testament, we'll take it, push it a little further. In the old testament in the book of Leviticus, they were told the children of Israel were told by Moses by giving it to the, uh, from God that they wasn't the, the priest couldn't even touch a dead body. Hello, somebody. Some people couldn't even touch their body because they God considered that unclean. Okay, okay. The women couldn't come to the sing, um, to the temple if they were on their monthly. That was considered unclean, unclean. Okay. God said, do not touch the unclean things. So when you're not personally touching it, but the person you laying up with touching it, it's going to touch you. Amen. I don't know why people don't understand this. You cannot be around all of this here negative because if it's negative, y'all, it's coming from a spirit. There's only two, two spirit world it can come from. The kingdom of light, which is the Holy Ghost, or the kingdom of darkness. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. If they're not born again, they're living in the kingdom of darkness. And we have to understand that. You don't hold it against them, but you got to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. So you will know what you're dealing with. So when you wake up and then you in the quick saying, you want to know what, what happened. Well, ain't no need to ask what happened. Because now you're going to know what's happening. You cannot let, it says, troublemaker plant seeds. They plant seeds of strife, of dis discourse, division. Ain't nothing good coming from them. That's an unclean spirit. Ain't nothing good coming from it. It's always contrary to something good. It hate all good stuff, but it love the dark stuff. Y'all got it? Mm, yes. And, and and you are not gonna you are not supposed to, as a child of God sit up there and be trying to argue and debate with these folks. These type people got unclean spirits and they need deliverance. They need to be born again. Okay, so you can pray for them, but by you being in the midst of these people, ain't again a trick of the devil thinking it's not gonna touch you because you born again. Hello, somebody. You keep on hanging around and you're going to see what's going to happen. You see what, what's going to happen. People are filled with unclean spirits. And that means if you have a fornication, if you sexing somebody out and they got unclean spirits, guess what? The odds are it's going to transfer over to you. Hello, somebody. 
This is why you, this stuff is serious. This is what the Holy Ghost has been giving me. And he told me to drop it because he people need to wake up, not just for y'all up here, but this is for all believers. Whoever see this video, it's a it's a, a awakening. You know, Christian people have to wake up and then they, they always saying something is wrong. Unclean spirit brings destruction. Hello. Hello. When you when something is always going wrong in your life, something is all and it may not be something big all the time. It could be, oh, you know, you're losing a job. You can't keep a job. Or it could be, um, you know, um, you know, you always sick. Something always wrong with you. You know, maybe not major issue things that keep you in the hospital, but chronic stuff. Always got a headache, always got a cold, always got this, always got that. That's an unclean spirit has entered your environment. Hello. Wake up, church. Is everybody understanding this? Amen. All of a sudden, you're getting rashes. You're getting stuff on your skin. Mm -hmm. An unclean spirit done visit you, and you just unaware of it. Stuff that just pop up out of nowhere. You ain't never had no rash in your life. Now, son, you got rashes popping up everywhere. Now, all of a sudden, all kind of messes happen. It's an unclean spirit has entered your environment. And you got to know and know how to detect it so you can rebuke it. Amen. And not let that thing just live in among you. Among you, hello, among you in your atmosphere, in your environment. So it's very, very crucial that you understand you can't be around. It's just not no, you know, party over here. You know, no, it, it's serious because that stuff can affect your, your health. It can affect your mind. It can have you start getting depressed, oppressed, depressed, everything. These unclean spirits ain't nothing to play with. Most Christian people are unaware of them. Raise your hand if you was aware of an unclean spirit before now. Are uh, you was aware of the function of them? I wasn't. <laughs> I have okay. more knowledge of it now. Well, to, oh, right. to break it, well, I let I me mean, last year. Sorry to cut y'all off, but I just when you were saying that, I already knew this though. Last year, my face on both sides of my cheeks had such a nasty, like pimples and dark spots, and it came out of nowhere. Nowhere. Okay. I know where it came from, and I actually mentioned it to you. I'll remind you later. Um, but it just happened, and it came out, and it lasted for almost a whole year. It took so long for my face to clear up, y'all. Mm -hmm. And it Unclean. finally cleared up, but I know what it. I know exactly where it came from, so I was very aware of... I didn't call it an unclean spirit, but I did say some kind of spirit um, somehow entered me. And I have to un call it by name for now on. You call it by unclean spirit. You yeah, I have clean spirit. I had to pray that thing away, and it took months, almost a whole. It took almost a year for my face to get back to normal. Yes, like yeah. now is the way it used to be. But I don't right. know what ha it happened out of nowhere. The end of the summer, I like I woke up to both sides of my face with pimples and dark spots, and I was like, "What is going on?" And I was so mad. I went and got a chemical peel and everything. It looked like the chemical peel lasts for like a month and then that it came right back. So I'm clean like, spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's exactly what it was. That's exactly what happens. They it normally you could tell um they bring that skin stuff. That's how you can tell you know that they're in your environment. And you got to rebuke them things out your environment. Now normally it's because of somebody you hanging with. Somebody that has been around you. And you are fellowshipping with these people and they're carrying these. Some of them got them inside of them, but some of them, they're just in their environment. OK, so in order for you not to have all these mishap things, oh, this happened, oh, that happened, oh, this happened, oh, like she said, it comes out of nowhere. It just pops up. An unclean spirit has visited you. He doesn't they don't always just stick with you day to day. But they will come and put stuff on you. And a lot of times it's because you're hanging, your environment is unclean. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Your environment, the people, the company that you're keeping, the atmosphere that you are creating around yourself and in your home is unclean. So they are attracted to that. 
So if the people in your home are not safe, that's why you got to always be, you know, praying your house out or constantly. And it's a lot of work. So I tell people in a minute, I'd rather move, honey, than me have to do all of that. Because that's going to be a lot of work on a person. You working a nine to five job, then you got to come home and keep clearing out your house where you lay your head. That don't make sense at all. So, and not just your home, people you're hanging out with, people you're going to the, you're going to this place with them, shopping with them. It could be your homie, your friends. If they're not born again and has not been washing the blood of the lamb, odds are they got some unclean spirits, y'all. Unclean spirits is the one that bring addictions to you. Because they go what? And get seven more what? Big boys. Big boys. Big boys. So you got to be aware of it. Okay? You got to be aware of it. And you got to rebuke it out your life. You have to say, Lord, deliver me from any unclean spirit that is in me operating or outside of me operating. And you got to clear that energy away from you. You got to open up your mouth. And I'm telling you, that's why I be trying to tell y'all what I do is not easy. It is not easy. I did, you know, nobody could, it's not enough money in the world to pay me to keep doing this if it wasn't for me loving the Lord. Okay, because it is a lot of time consuming and you got to be disciplined. So the thing of it is, you got to be disciplined in all aspects of your life. You can't just be hanging out with folks. Oh, they're good people. It's not to say that they're not good people, but these people could be under a generational curse they don't know nothing about. These people got unclean spirits they don't know nothing about. But you, the child of God, you should know better. You should be able to discern. Come here, let me pray for you, sis. You got an unclean spirit following you. But we have to hey hoeing with these people and they bring an unclean spirits your way. And you don't even see them because you ain't got no discernment of spirit. You ain't got to see him, but you, 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 the Holy Ghost, if you got discernment, Holy Ghost going to tell you that per, that's an unclean spirit coming out. When they talk to you, the Holy Ghost will tell you that's a demon. Holy Ghost will tell you, oh no, they, they, they battling with something. He ain't going to tell you the details, everything, but stuff he will warn you if you are connected to him. Going to let you just lay up with somebody and they a devil. And you ain't got no kind of discernment. You laying up with the enemy. You know, and letting these demons come inside of you. It's not just, oh, I'm lonely. You know what? It's going to, and the Holy Ghost want me to say this. It's going to be harder to get rid of all that mess that you done invited in your life and in your body than it is for you to be laying down having sex with somebody for a good time. The repercussions behind it is going to be a lot. It ain't worth it. Hello, somebody. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It is not worth it. The repercussions to get that nastiness out your life, get that mess up out of your body. These unclean spirits are really, uh, they done went amok, okay? They bring all kind of plagues to the child of God. And the only reason it could work is because you're unaware of it. You're ignorant. My people perish because of the lack of knowledge. It's not just, oh, He's a good person. Do you know for a fact that that's a good person? Do you know, uh, are they born again? Or do they have any belief in the Lord Jesus? They may not be born again, but are they on, they, are they on their way? Are they a belief? Paul said, what have y'all done since you believe? And the book of Acts, he said, what? Hello? He went to the heathen people. What have y'all done since y'all believe? Have y'all spoken tongues? Have y'all been filled with the Holy Ghost? They said, we don't know what that is. We never heard of it. You know, you got to taste, you got to push envelope further than what you're doing because you got to know who you laying up with and who you buddying up with. Amen. Amen. So we want to make sure we not allowing this stuff to come into our life and we just unaware because we want it. The flesh. All right. You know, <laughs> wages of sin is death. The flesh ain't, the job is to take us to hell. So we got to make sure we understanding this stuff and we got to make sure we fighting back. Hello, somebody. Fighting back by being knowledgeable about it. Fighting back by saying, no, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Don't bring that around me. 
You know, I don't, I don't, I, no heat, no judgment on you, but that's you. I don't want that stuff around me. When the, when I when when I was growing up, when I was a young woman in New York, I wouldn't say I had them backstage. What in the world? And we were going. I was going to a birthday party. One of my cousins was having a big birthday party at a club, big club uh, in New York. Uh, what was it called? A Q Club, and in Queens. Tia might know that club, but um, we were going to this club, and it was a lot of you know. I, my homies, you know, one my, one girl I was really friends with, she invited some other people she knew. So we was in the limousine on our way to the party. And all of a sudden, they just broke out some cocaine, put it on the table and started sniffing it right in front of me. Right in front of me. But you know what I told them? I said, look, I got a kid. You understand me? I told my friend, the one that, you know, invited these other girls, chicks. I said, let me tell you something. You know, no heat, no judgment on you. Do what you want to do. But you know I don't get down like that. I got a kid at home. Okay, you know I don't get down like that. You could have told me what was going on. You could have said, well, Kim, you know, we're going to do a little something, something, you know. I don't judge people for what they do, but don't get me involved in it. You understand? Without my knowledge of it. You understand? You know, you don't play no okie doke on me. I didn't play that when I was in the world, and I still don't play it now. I'm in the church. Okay? So you don't play no okie doke on me. You know, if anything was to go down, you know, they get busted. I'm going to jail right along with them and I ain't even did nothing. You know, so, you know, you have to be in control of your environment, your atmosphere, wherever you dwelling at. Because if not, and I, and you know what? And I said to myself, you know, I done told her, I went off on her and everything. And she was like, oh, you know, I'm sorry, Kimmy. I didn't know, you know. Oh, you know, no, you didn't know. Because you know I didn't do cocaine. You knew that. You didn't know. Don't lie and say you didn't know. You knew. But she didn't care, okay? People don't care about you. You understand? They want to do what they want to do and get you caught up in it. Next thing you know, you paying the consequences right along with them. So you best to know what you who you hanging around with, who you calling your buddy, who you calling your homie, who you calling your boo thing, your lover, whoever. You better know what you're doing. Because I'm telling y'all, this stuff is very serious out here spiritually. We are in a spiritual battle. We are in a war zone for souls. And these, these, uh, these unclean spirits, they trying to bring havoc to the child of God's life because they bring destruction. They come to kill, steal, or destroy. If they can't kill you, can't destroy you, they're going to bring destruction your way. So this is why you have to keep your environment clean, as clean as possible, okay? That's why I said, you know, declutter your house. It's not always good to have so much overflow up in your crib. You know, you have to get rid of that stuff because them demons and stuff, they hide in stuff like that. They love filth. They love a whole lot of stuff. They just love stuff. You understand? That's why they call unclean. Okay? So that's a way to start physically. But, you know, spiritually, you got to start calling people out. You got to start knowing who's around you, who's talking to you. If they always negative, you got to start shutting people down and getting them out your life, period. All right? Because the more you let that stuff dwell in your dwelling place, they will come for you. You know, they ain't scared of the flesh. They only are uh, scared of Jesus Christ, okay? They not scared of our flesh. They scared of the Lord Jesus. So if you don't do nothing about it, they going to come in and open up shop on you. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8 through 12. I mean, 8 through 10. Um, I could read it. First Peter 4, chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. Um, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. Mm -hmm. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts use them well to serve one another you know what I mean? that's it what is that you read from eight to ten, to ten. Mm -hmm. or you want me to keep going um go ahead read 11 and 12 
Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. You got Do that? You heard what he said? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Mm. All right. Look at the apostle Peter talking, laying it down right here. You see what he said? He said, um, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. That's us, the believers. We have to show, continue to show love. Um, for one another, cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. That would be me. If I'm evangelizing and I'm coming to your house, your city or something, you know, you open your house and let me have a meal and, and somewhere to stay. But I ain't staying where a whole bunch of evil spirits are. Okay. I'm just letting y'all know. Okay. All right. Your house got to be cleaned out now. And he says, um, do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself was speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. And that's what I tried to do. I tried to do my very best at whatever I set out to do in life, in general, okay? That's in my natural life and my spiritual life, okay? So he's letting us know this is why it's important to stay connected to the believers, the body of Christ. Is everybody understanding this? Because this, this this world we living in, honey, it's the wild, wild west out here. It's the wild, wild west going on. And you better know some other uh, like-minded people like you, some born-again believers that have been washing the blood of the Lamb of God. Amen. 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 You, I mean, you know, it's horrible to be left out here talking about you trying to befriend these people in the world. Ain't no telling what they got going on. Amen. Amen. So we know from an example for our own lives, that things are not easy to get rid of. So can you imagine these people that just reject the Lord and could care less about doing something right in their life? All they do is, you know, again, like, you know, lie, cheat, scheme, and you can't, and you know, it's sad to say, but some people hold entire family like that. Hello, somebody. There's a lot of people in the world, all their family members function in almost the same way, which is unclean. What do you say, Crystal? I said scam artists. Yes, scam artists. You know, it up to no good. Ain't about no good. You can't rely on them to give you five dollars. You know, even your family, you got to be very cautious these days. You got to be cautious, y'all. Nobody's exempt. Nobody's exempt. When it comes to your soul, nobody's exempt. Okay, period. And you don't, you don't, you know, do it rudely, but you got to be, you got to have knowledge of this stuff. Bible said, in everything that you do, get understanding. You got to have understanding of what you're dealing with so you won't get caught up in stuff that's going to take a long time to get out of. Sometimes, you know, we say go in Jesus' name. Sometimes, honey, they ain't going nowhere. Sometimes you got to put the fasting on it. You got to put the praying on it. You got to do everything the Bible tells you to do, get some rid of some of them. It's not easy. And I'm going to tell you all, it's not a lot of people functioning in deliverance in, in the spiritual realm, in the church world. Okay? I'm talking about real people, real folks. Okay? Real men and women of God that the Holy Ghost is working through. So, it's not a lot out there. So, you can be out there living like that on the edge if you want to. And them things, I'm, I'm telling you all, it's not easy to get rid of because they don't want to leave because then they have to go find somewhere else to dwell. You understand? That's why it's hard. A lot of time, them demons don't want to leave a person because they know that they there. Now they got to go. Now, see, they get their assignments from the devil. So now they know they're going to get in trouble because they got kicked out. Now they got to go find somebody new. You understand? It's going to take time for them to get somebody new to trick, to, you know. I, all I'm saying, y'all, is that's how it works. And you don't want no parts of that. And you definitely don't want that up in your house. Amen? Amen, somebody other than Crystal. Amen. 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 
Amen. You don't want that mess up in there because sometimes, baby, it takes a long time to get rid of that mess. All right, let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 9. 17, verse 9. Can I read that one? Yeah. Uh, can you all get that one time? Um, Proverbs chapter 17, the one you were reading, but chapter 17, verse 9. Okay. Better a dry person. No, no you are in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. It says love. Oh, uh, love prospers. Prospers when a fault is forgiven, but do Dwelling. rarely on it. Separates. Se separates close friends. A si single rebuke. Rebuke does do more for a person of understanding. Then a hundred hundred lashes lashes on the back of a full. Okay, bull. stop right there. Stop right there. Thank you, BJ. All right, so. What what is what is King Solomon saying here? Love prospers when a fault is is forgiven. That's how you your love can. That's how you can end up loving your uh, loving your enemy. You understand? Because he said love prospers when a fault is forgiven. When you forgive somebody, hello somebody. When you forgive them, truly forgive them in your heart. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven. It may take a little time. But once you get to that point, you will understand that you are working the principles of the word of the Lord. That's why you got the right result. Get it? Everybody is following me? So it says, but dwelling on it separates close friends. Dwelling on stuff ain't going to get you nowhere. Dwelling on stuff ain't going to get you nowhere. All it does is take you backward. Everybody got that? That's what those are people out here, the Christian people that love to dwell on stuff, can't let stuff go. And then number 10 say, a single rebuke does more for a person of under a person of understanding than a hundred lashes on the back of a fool. Now, what is what is King uh, Solomon saying right there, somebody? A single rebuke does more for a person of understanding. Can somebody answer that? What is he saying right there in your own words? Go ahead, Crystal. He's saying, um, okay, a single rebuke means that someone is correcting you. Um, it does more for a person of understanding. So you got to be a person who already understands that um, if you step out of line and you're not walking on the right path, God will send somebody to you to correct you. But you got to be a person of understanding. When the correction comes to you, you right. can't be defensive. You can't Amen. start throwing up about, oh, well, what about your life? That's not it. Be a person of understanding. And then, yep. that, then the simple rebuke uh, will do more for you. But that's what he's trying to tell you. If you have the, um, the heart of understanding, uh, when someone comes to you with this with the single rebuke, you know, it, it'll 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 do what it was set out to do. And then Amen. it says it then a hundred lashes on the back of a fool. So it means that you can beat somebody down to 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 a nothing, you know, but if you just 
if you just be a person that accepts correction. Yeah. You don't have to be uh, penalized or punished. By a to, whooping. Right, to such an extreme. Amen. Because God can, God can whoop you in the spirit too. Yes, he can. He can send so much calamity your way till you say, okay, Lord, I surrender. You know, mm -hmm. instead of just taking the good counsel. Amen. 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 That's good. Yes, yes, yes. A sing, he said a single. So the person don't even got to correct you but one time. One time only. One time only. So if it's, if you are, like she said, if you like it says here, if you're a person of understanding, you know how to take it in, baby. And you know how to, that, that was me. I always accepted correction. Whether I liked it or not, I realize in my life, it doesn't always matter how, how I feel about it. If I know it's good correction, good counsel, I'm going to take it in. That's just my nature. I'm going to take it in. I might not, you know, tell the person, oh, yeah, yeah, you right, you right. I'll listen, and then I'll go home and be like, you know what? They was right. <laughs> and I, I was the opposite. I used to have to get the thousand lashes. The lashes, <laughs> right, right. Right. A lot of times. Exactly. I was yep. the opposite. And it took me a, a great beat down, a many beat downs, until yes. I realized and I surrendered. You yeah, know, so, yeah, so I experienced that. And, and, and the word of God is so true. So the true. word of God is so true. Amen. It's true. Anybody else? I was thinking about the same thing like what Crystal said. I used to be like that. Um, you know, I remember one time a long time ago when I was real, like, I think I was like around like, like a teenager. And um, I had um, something had happened with my mom and I and uh and we you know she rebuked me about something um the, the uh so I was like you know what I, I ain't gonna listen I, and I left the house and I went and got my own place and I, as a you know a young man mm -hmm. and um for a long time I was kind of mad with my mom about that stuff that happened because she mm -hmm. um and you know but then um Later on, when I started getting to get when I got saved and stuff, and I and I was like, you know what? It's foolish to be holding. I remember somebody was saying about you know you gotta forgive people, and you know the Bible always talking about forgive people and forgive those and forgive, forgive, forgive. And even he said if you if you forgive those who trespass against you, I will forgive as I forgive you. So once I forgave her, mm -hmm. you know we came back and in a relationship and it mm -hmm. was stronger than before and then you know you know how many benefits that has been for me being available to bless my mom to help her or her helping me you know being there for each other when each other, you know because yeah. my mom now she need me a lot and i and i be and i'm i i you know i help her without a i mean without blinking or thinking twice but amen you know if i would have been like that fool and never forgave her, never found out about forgiveness. Imagine all the stuff that I would have missed out on. And yeah. then uh, you know, you know, and a fool keep doing foolish stuff and they don't care. They mm -hmm. get a thousand a thousand lashes mm -hmm. because they're not they don't have no wisdom. Mm -hmm. And when you have understanding, yeah, you doing stuff, you do stuff, even with a person that did something to you, you forgive them, and then all of a sudden now you can do stuff with this person that you never even thought you could do. Like love, love covers that. Yeah. And erase. It's kind of like, it's gone. Like mm -hmm. you can enjoy a good relationship. Like I enjoy a relationship with my mom now, but mm -hmm. if I would have been a fool, never forgave that, you know, I could have been out here. Who knows what doing, Amen. just being foolish, you know, hating on people, but mm -hmm. you know, the forgiveness of God is so amazing because it helps you be in a better place where you stand on on firm ground and and it helps you you know forgiving people just helps you period because it makes you healthy you know mm -hmm. you get the blessing of giving somebody a hug and a kiss or just praying for them mm -hmm. you know and then god forgives you too <laughs> Amen. so this is just a lot that uh that that kind of put put me in the mind frame of thinking about that scripture we just read and um, you know what I'm saying? So that was a good one. Yeah. There. Yeah, it's good. That is a scripture that makes you think. It makes you take a moment and think about it. Amen. 
and it's a good it's a good scripture and it's very very um re realistic you know it really happens in real life okay Let, let's uh move it on to proverbs chapter 22 somebody read verse 24 through 25 go ahead crystal okay so it says don't befriend befriend angry people or associated with hot tempered people or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul wow now that's heavy. What 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 did I just say about the unclean spirit? You he just said, or you can endanger your soul. Hello, is everybody following? Everybody see the connection? Yeah, what amen. I'm talking about with these unclean people, these amen. unclean spirits, and these people that you are befriending. He just said, it, and it can endanger your soul. And let me um, add this, uh, Sister Kim, because. What happens is, let's say you're not a confrontational person, but mm. you're around an angry person who um is hot tempered. Well, every time they arguing with you, um, or arguing at you, you know you're receiving that onto yourself. And if you comment or don't comment, you're becoming resentful of that person yes. because it gets to a point where you be you you may not verbally say it, but you're gonna start feeling like I can't stand them, I can't mm -hmm. stand them, and then right. the, I can't stand them going to turn into, I hate them. I yeah. hate them. And yeah. then what is that doing? That is putting that resentment in your heart. Now you don't have a clean heart. Right. You don't have a clean heart. And so mm -hmm. if God was to crack the sky, rack it in and mind you, you ain't did nothing to that person. That person is attacking you verbally, you know, or whatever, but you harboring the resentment mm -hmm. and the resentment is in your heart. And so mm -hmm. God cracked the sky, you can't go because your right. heart ain't clean. Your mm -hmm. heart ain't clean. So right. that's the reason why he's trying to tell you, don't befriend these people. If these people are like this, get out of Dodge. Yes. Because, it's... because we have to guard our heart. Yeah. Our heart. That's what yep. God looks at on a daily basis. Your yep. heart. When you interacting with people, that's why it's better to walk away. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to get to a, such a heated uh, situation, whether you, because some people are very passive aggressive. They won't say mm -hmm. anything in the moment, but they harbor in that in their heart. It's just churning, 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 churning. And then you got to go to God, and now you bitter because you don't want to ask God for forgiveness because you feel like I didn't do nothing. I ain't do nothing Amen. wrong. But but see, and then you'll hold off for going and asking for that forgiveness because you will feel that you have been offended. Mm -hmm. But you're not realizing how you let the enemy creep in and now he has changed the condition of your heart. Yeah, and that's why God say forgive, so that you can release mm -hmm. that off your heart. You know, mm -hmm. so this is this, all of this teaching today is imperative for us to learn how to guard our heart. You know, yeah. it, you know, people be thinking, oh, I'm just leaving because I don't want to get in no fight with them, and none and God is teaching us all these things so that we can make the rapture. He don't care mm -hmm. nothing about you duking it out with nobody. He trying to tell you how to keep your heart pure and yes. keep your heart safe mm -hmm. from, from all these influences. Mm -hmm. So if you can understand that, then you can start uh, uh practicing that in your life, um, so that um so that you don't become a victim to these situations. Okay. Yeah, 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 and a victim of your own circumstances. And I mean. That's drop the mic. You don't be friend angry people or associate with hot temper people. He's telling us out the gate what and what not to do. Or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul. Don't agree to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for someone else. I mean, you're supposed to be co-signing for folk. If folk can't get it on their own, don't you put your name on the dotted line. Amen, somebody. So that's what that means. But you know, it's imperative that we understand this stuff that we read and we uh, apply it to our lives, not just understand it. We got to apply it and we got to make it known and it got to show up in our lives. OK, not just reading it and talking about it. You got to make it show up in your own personal life where you saying you done befriend some angry folk now and some hot temper people, too. You got to learn how to just up. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Slowly disconnect yourself from them people. Slowly get away from them. Slowly turn down the time that you with them. Turn down the time that you on the phone. Turn down the time that you meeting them here, going here, going there with them. 
You just got to do it for your own well-being. Hello. This is what he's saying. He said you can endanger your own soul when you don't take this good counsel and put it to your life. Um, again, again, the unclean spirits is coming from people that you are connected to, people that you done buddied up with. And it could even be coming from your boo thing, your spouse. It, 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 honey, you just better be knowing. You better be on alert. When stuff start popping up, you got to know how to rebuke stuff. And Amen. You rebuke it. You don't rebuke it correctly. It ain't going to go. So you have to say, you nasty, unclean spirits. Mm. You better get out of here. And yes. I command you to leave and never return. Don't you dare try to come back here. For the blood of Jesus is against you. Amen. And I rebuke everything that you try to bring with you. It got to go in Jesus' mighty name. You Amen. got to get that stuff out your life. Because it's subtle. It's, su it's a spirit that's subtle. The spirit doesn't just say, bam, I'm on you. You know, bam. A big thing that happened. No, it's subtle. It's little stuff here, little stuff there that you ain't paying no attention to. You just going about your daily living like, oh, you know they crazy. Oh, here we go again. Or oh, they acting crazy again. They talking crazy. You got to get them people out your life. You got to bring that stuff to a minimum where you don't deal with, you're not dealing with people like that consistently. He just said, don't befriend angry people. We was going that way. No, but we're supposed to make oh, the middle right. Okay. We're supposed to make the left. Hey, Monique, mute, mute your phone. All right. He said, don't befriend angry people or associate with hot temper people. And you know, you be having people that you see on TV or people you know. And they already got a hot temper. Now they buddying up and now they get ready to marry somebody. They talking about they engaged to a person with the same temper they got. Now, how is two hot temper people going to make it work? It won't. Thank you. What make you think in your head, you know, you got a hot temper, the dude got a hot temper, but y'all come together talking about y'all being one. How can you even come together as one if you don't agree? Don't Ain't that what we read last Sunday, two right. Sundays ago? How can two yeah. walk together unless they agree? You got to be in agreement and harmony with folks talking about you a couple. Mm, mm, mm. These young women, you know, always no, don't have no agreements on nothing, but they talking about they a couple. They all on the Facebook. They all on the Instagram. And the dude looking at them like he can't stand them. Or he don't want to even be there on the video. He looking like he hot and bothered, okay? They meet these guys that pop up and they take no understanding to it. They take no discernment not to know that these guys got anger problems. I got to leave him alone. He need anger counseling. I ain't messing with that demon, okay? Just got to know what you're dealing with. In amen. Jesus name, amen. All right. Yes, what a... Man, I'm telling you, this stuff is getting so deep because... Um, it, it, it's getting deep because why? We in a perverted world, y'all. And mm -hmm. there's so many things that's going on that we are not unaware, we are unaware of. And the only way we can get aware is through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why you have to pray in your tongue so you can get some discernment. Amen. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this mic. I want everybody to please stick on the subject. Don't be going off in the la-la land. This is some deep stuff that the Holy Spirit gave to me. I had to labor and really pray and really meditate for the Spirit of the Lord to give us a message, to give us something this juicy. This, you know, this is very needed in every believer's life. Amen. So um, stick on the subject and talk about yourself. Go ahead. You know, I was thinking about the stuff like you were saying about don't don't uh, befriend angry people and don't associate with hot tempered people. You know, it's a couple of people like that at my job that um we got a big, you know, we got a crew, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 people. And um I have noticed from being working there that the people that got the they're always angry. And then I noticed the ones that are hot tempered because they're quick to jump up and 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 be like ready to fight about stuff. And then the ones that are angry, they're always talking about some, oh man, you know, I'm talking negative, like always angry about something. And I was like, 
I made up in my mind for that when I found out. I said, I'm not, I don't want nothing to do with them. I work with them. And we, I might say something. I barely, I don't really want to talk a lot with them about nothing, just about the job. And that's it. And get away from them quickly because, you know, like you said, the people that's um, angry, they go and pop off and say some stuff. And it's kind of, and then you now, like Crystal was saying, now you got this stuff going on in your heart. Every time you see them, you can't, but you know, I just stay away from that. And I just focus on doing my job and doing it well. Amen. And then on the uh, the anger, the uh, hot temper one, I really stay away from them because, you know, you could be around somebody got a hot temper, and if something pop off you with around them, some of that stuff can jump right on you. You know. Yes. And, and Amen. Bullet, bullets don't have no names or none of that type that. of stuff. You know. <laughs> I remember back in the day when before I came to Virginia, before I went to Puerto Rico, and then to Virginia. It was some kids in Baltimore, Maryland. They was fight. It was like a um, a girl and the boyfriend or something. They was fighting, and then another guy got jumped in to try to break them up, and the dude stabbed him by mistake, and he got killed. Mm. You know, just by being around them, and yeah. he didn't even had nothing to do with them. Yeah, and it made me think about that. You know, that could cost you your life, like and danger a- your soul. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, and yep. then, you know, I'm pretty sure that I, and it happens right now, every day. Yeah. You know, I think about gang members when you talk about that, that one spirit go get the seven other. Yes. You know, imagine that when somebody comes talk, talking to you about something, yo, I want you to be part of my gang and this and that. And then, like, you start thinking, like, nah, man, you tell him no, but then he's going to bring the other gang members and they all come on, man, you got to man up or you got to. And then now mm-hmm. you in a gang, and next thing you know, you the gang ain't going to end up good. Right. It's kind of like a gang thing. Like, you know, all these kids out here getting killed because whoever they was hanging with. And then yeah. I went, them hot temper ones went and started some stuff. So and now that. somebody else got to come and get with them, mm-hmm. back and forth type stuff. And mm-hmm. and then the thing about Mary, and I know this lady, one of the ladies that... um. That she get married, married a dude one day, and I had went to the house not that recently to arch her and her sister eyebrows, and uh, um, and then the girl was in there with her um, her man was there, the guy she get remarried to. So I'm up in there, and the mama in there, the all the sisters, they have about all these people in there, seven, eight people was in there. So I arched the two ladies' eyebrows, and then all the other sisters were like, man, I want to get my eyebrows arched. I want to get my eyebrows. Arched. So I went in there for two people and ended up doing uh, six. And the dude was in the corner. So I was like, at the end of that, I said, I'm going to pray, you know, for because the whole family here. So, and he asked, and they, she calling him, him, come on. He said, I'm good. And then I, and then, he, and then uh, some kind of way he came up there and then he's like, look at this, watch out, man, I got to go. I said, and she get ready to marry this dude. And and he don't even want to pray. He, he don't even want to pray. And then. It's a whole Christian family there. And I was like, that was a, but when you pray for discernment, you see stuff like that. Yeah. So I was like, you know, that's, that go back to what you just said about these people out here marrying. You, how you going to marry somebody and they don't even love God, but you sold out for God. That ain't going to work. That ain't so, going to work. You know, so I'm, and he don't even want to pray, you know, right there with the whole family and all the grandbabies and everybody right there. So I thought that was, it, it's Pray-play. a lot of that type of stuff going on these days. Yeah, and I yeah. just thank God for that lesson on today because the lesson, you know, it just keeps you on readiness, keeps you alert. What to, you know, I it just goes to show me that the Holy Ghost been helping me out the whole time because I discern, you know, when we pray for discernment, we see these people and we want to stay away from them because it can bring you a lot of trouble in your life. You know, like yeah. people were anger, angry all the time, people gossiping talking crazy and then the other one with the hot temper they ready to jump up and do you know anything it's, it's just best to be far away from them real far yeah. and and if you got to be in a work environment don't just keep the talk like yeah, you said talk. put the talk and turn the talking down turn it down the, turn everything down all the all down. That. you know i go the other way you yeah. know i don't want to be around that and it keeps me in peace you know i go yeah. do my job and i'm mm-hmm. peaceful I'm happy. I'm praising God. Yeah. You know, and it, that's the kind of we got to do that these days. We got to eliminate yeah, all do. of that. Angry people in our life, get away from them. People mm-hmm. that are hot headed, get away from them. And yeah. then you you live a better godly life like that. Mm-hmm. 
And God said it, and we got to do it. Amen. This is the word of God. And newsflash, this is why a lot of people in the church that say they're Christians walk around like angry little birds. This is why a lot of them, you know, these big, big uh, name, big title name bishops and uh, uh, all these people with titles, this is why a lot of them are falling from grace because a lot of people don't do self-evaluation. All they do is want somebody to sit down there and praise them and, and, and you know, uh, and, and, you know, put on a show, but nobody's really doing no self-deliverance. Amen. You have to first work on yourself before you can help somebody else. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Anybody have a comment? Please stick to the scriptures, the lesson, and speak about yourself. Yeah, real quick. I just want to say um, regarding this scripture, um, Personally speaking, it wasn't so much of the anger that rubbed off on me. I just remember a time in my life where at this time I only had Tori, where I, I'm not a drinker at all. Like I cannot stand the way liquor tastes. It tastes so nasty to me. I've never been one to love to drink, mm -hmm. but it was a time in my life where I was hanging out with a cousin of mine. I mean, probably for about a year. When Tori was a little girl and, you know, she liked to drink and it was like, it rubbed off on me. And here I am, especially Hennessy. I hate Hennessy. That stuff tastes so nasty, but I was drinking it anyway mm -hmm. just because I was in that company of her yeah. and whoever else we was hanging out with. Mm -hmm. So that rub that spirit, I'll call it a spirit, rubbed off on me too. And yeah. it's like that for maybe a little maybe a year or a little less than a year but I wasn't mm -hmm. even a drinker but I was just doing that because I was in that company right so, right I was delivered from that as well yes so God be the glory praise God he delivered you amen and she's absolutely right even if it's something you don't like doing that spirit will override you he just said or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul because imagine if we just all died in our sins, y'all. We'd be on a, we'll be in hell right now. You know, if God will have allowed that to happen. So we that's why you we gotta be so grateful unto the Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, anybody else? Praise the Lord. Um I was thinking about this. That's like the um when people say misery love company. Yeah. You know, um you sometimes you will be around somebody, you will be you will be happy and upbeat and all that stuff, and they'll be sad and miserable and upset and all that. And then it seems like they energy will jump right on you if you let it, and yeah. you will end up sad. Like I, that's what I got of it. You will yeah. end up feeling like them, and and that that, that spirit will drain you if you yes, if you will. Up, if you an upbeat type of person. And you end up being around a person that's always upset and all that, and you trying so busy trying to keep them up and lift them up and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, your spirit will end up down there where they is at. It will snap you right down there and drain you, drain the happiness and the joy right out. Of you. So, yeah, you know this what I got out of that, and you know I'm praying that God keep exactly. everybody, all our spirits up in a good way because we do not need the unclean spirits around us. No. The devil trying, he you know, he tries to send he'll he'll send somebody that's close to you right there. Yes. Right there in your household, or right there yeah. that's your friends or your family member that's real close, yeah. that's close to drain yeah. that good spirit to try to take your light out. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, you know, thank you, praise God for that. And um Most I times think that, it is somebody close to you that the devil normally sends. Amen. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, is yes. So you know, I just thank and praise God that He opened the eye, eyes eyes towards stuff that we need to be seeing oh, yeah. and stuff. Yes. That's that's just like uh you you know you said you can't you don't hang around the same people, you do the same thing. For when your eyes is open and you got the Holy Ghost and your spirit is you know changing and stuff, those people are not appealing to you no more anyway. Right, right. It's like no, it ain't that you it's your they spirit can't be around your spirit and see. I've been hearing things about me. Oh, 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 
she thinks she does it from that. Oh, she acting funny. That's 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 what they have been saying about me that I'm acting funny. That I'm mm-hmm. um. Well, I don't say you know what I don't even care if I'm acting funny. Yeah, I'm acting funny because I'm being I'm I'm trying to get my spirit right with God. I'm not gonna go That's right. go be with them because I ain't gonna be acting funny if I wake open my eyes up and be a hell. Amen. It, it ain't gonna be no fun to act. So you know, I just I thank and praise Amen. God. That, you know, I always been a leader. Don't come here thinking what you're gonna do. Get out. Amen. I always been a been a leader. Amen. Been a leader, so I didn't. That's right. All the friends, I didn't. I didn't go with do what people do. I did mm-hmm. my own thing. You can right. see me. I would, everybody else would have on black. I'm gonna have on all colors mm-hmm. type stuff. Like you know, I didn't put that down, lady. I didn't um go do what do what the people did. So you know, Amen. I that's why I'm able to like follow me. Don't I ain't following y'all. No, y'all y'all ain't leading me nowhere. If anything, Amen. I'm gonna do the lead, and I'm gonna take you the right way. You're not leading me nowhere. So, <laughs> you better you know, say yeah, it. <laughs> so, look, if we going the wrong way, if I'm going the wrong way, it's gonna be because I decided to go. It ain't gonna be because nobody else took me the wrong way. No, I took us the wrong way. Amen. So I just thank and praise God for that. You know, He keeping our eyes open. And that, you know, the young folks there, they say stay woke. He keeping us woke. Yes, stay we, woke. We 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 sleeping on it. We stay woke. Yes, we can't. But, we can't afford and, to. Yes, pray for me in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, we definitely have to stay woke. We have to be vigilant. Um, vigilant. Um, um, Tia says so true even their emotions will get in you I get that all the time yes I'll tell you, I didn't we we just read it he said or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul so that's the reason why because again now that we know we are awakened about these unclean spirits because see nobody talks about these unclean spirits and these are the ones that's going to get the big boys to get up on you so if you can renounce and rebuke them out your way and get out and get them out your way and get them out your life and get them from around you, you won't have to worry about the big ones coming to you. Amen. This is like a real revelation from the Holy Spirit. Ain't no man, ain't nobody going to be able to break, tell you nothing like this other than the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So we got to remember when stuff popping up and you like, wait, something don't seem right. Unclean spirit don't visit. Okay. You got to go. I know where you at. I know it's you. I know it's you trying to bring this rash. I know it's you trying to bring all this filth and dirty and mess my way, but I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And you better get out of here and never come back. Plead the blood on them jokers. Amen. Okay, go ahead, Crystal. Um, um, thanking and praising God for the word on today. Um, because um, even before um, I had um, I guess the knowledge of all of these um situations, you know, where God broke it down to us so that we could see the inside of it. Um, I had a friend that I had for over twenty years. We met when I was in New York, and we worked at the post office together, and uh, we kept in touch throughout all the years. As I got married, she got married. Um, she lost her child, you know, and um, her husband passed away right around. I think her husband passed away right after my husband passed away. So we we had some similarities and we just kept in touch. So when Taylor graduated high school, um, I was anybody that I was friends with, I was telling them, I'm moving to North Carolina. I'm moving to Raleigh. I'm moving to Raleigh because my sister and uh, uh, firstborn had already went. DP had already went to North Carolina and they thought it was a real nice place. So I wanted to change. So I moved. But before I could move, I mentioned it to her and she sold her house in New York and she moved to Raleigh. So by the time I got ready to move to Raleigh, she was already there. So I asked her if I could stay with her, you know, for a few months while I got myself together so I can get my own place. She said, sure, no problem. Come. Well, I had got laid off from my job. So I was on unemployment. So when I got there, um, I got a temp job. Uh, with Blue Cross and Blue Shield, but it was a temp job, so it wasn't, you know, paying like what I was normally paying. So I was, I asked her if I could give her like a hundred dollars a week to stay in the room, and she was like, "Sure." So as I was staying in the room, um, I noticed that 
she 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 had suffered from, she was suffering from depression but she didn't tell me to what degree you know she was actually on medication they for never her. do right so um uh, i would come home and sometimes she would just be sitting in the pitch black you know like at first she was real she was the woman that i remembered you know really upbeat and and we were having fun but then as time started going by i started seeing more and more darkness now, I was like, wow, what's going on? What's going on? So I would go in the room in the dark and say hi to her, you know, and she was just she was just really out of it, you know. So as time went on, I was like, well, she, you know, I would invite her places and she didn't want to go because I was new to, to North Carolina. So I was trying to learn the city. So she didn't want to go. So I started going and hanging out. My mom lived in South Carolina. So I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to start going to my mom's house every weekend because not only was she depressed, she started having a really bad attitude. You know, like um, she she showed me like a section in the kitchen where I could keep my food. But then when I would put my food there, I, I noticed I would come back. She'd be done moved it. You know, so it was like these little solid battles. The and little I, subtle stuff. Yeah, I was like, I'm not going to be fighting nobody with where you put the paprika. So, right. <laughs> so I would leave for the weekends. And when I would come back, Ooh, she would see she would seem even more salty. Well, lo and behold, I went to CIAA one weekend, and when I came back, it looked like all hell broke loose. She was so angry that I had left. Now, at the same time, I had got a new job. So so you know how they send all the little paperwork to the house. So I don't know if she opened the paperwork and saw where I was making more money, and maybe she thought I was trying to jip her out because I had asked for her to lower the rent. You know, I don't really know what it was. All I know is her whole attitude and everything flipped. And she was like, do you have a place to live? And I remember saying I was crying. Um, I had left her house and I went looking for a place. And you know how you got to put down $25, $50 for every application fee? It was added up. And I remember I just stopped and cried. And I was like, well, please just help get me out this situation. Make a long story short. I saw a little apartment complex. Now, I didn't know my way around rally. I just was driving. And I saw they had the little balloons out. And it was like, oh, new construction, new leasing. Come on in. So I got out. Some said, go on in. I went in, clicked, filled out the application. The lady called me the next day. And she was like, you approved. And she told me, you know, what it was. They gave you three months rent free. and Because they was trying to fill up the apartment. I was like, honey, I didn't go back home and tell her right away. I was kind of keeping it to myself because I didn't want no showdown. So she came in the room. It's you. It's you. you done found a place to move. And I said, yep, I sure have. So I moved and I couldn't take everything with me. So some stuff she had like in a little storage unit down underneath her house. So when I hired the movers to go get the stuff, they was down in there and they saw a snake. And they so they came back and they said, Miss Pat Miss Patterson, I know you probably don't want that stuff because it if it's it would look like a baby snake. So the mama snake probably ain't too far behind it. And you don't know out of all that stuff where where it could be. Right. And I said, no, I said, okay, that's fine. Just leave that stuff there. And so then he said something to me that really struck me odd. He said, well, I don't know how your friend, the homeowner, didn't see the snake because the snake right there on the steps and she got a camera pointing right to the steps. And so I said, what? So he was like, yeah, she should have been able to see all that because she got the camera. And, and she was real funny about her camera. She watched her camera like, you know, because she ain't had no light. She just sitting watching her camera. And I said, oh my goodness. I said, I wonder if she planted that snake down in there yeah. for me to take with me to my house and stuff. But I said all that to say, I was so I was so grateful to God that God got me out of that place. Um, yeah. I don't know if it was jealousy staring because I ain't had no reason for her to be jealous. I was just trying to be a friend. I paid the rent on time every month, you know, so yeah. I kept her, I kept her house clean. I even cooked, you know, so I don't know what the problem was. But um, I just think and praise God. That was an example to show me. And ever since then, I don't be claiming nobody as being no friends. And I don't be uh, letting nobody just come up in my house and stuff after Amen. that experience. So sometimes it takes you to go through a really bad experience so you can yeah. learn your lesson. So yeah. I just think and praise God. That was my lesson. And I learned it. So I, I don't live like that anymore. And, and I don't ask to go and be staying at other people's houses and stuff. I just don't do it. So... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so um, I thank and praise God for for that lesson that I learned. Yeah, amen. Amen. You can't be putting your trust in people. And they were friends for, like she said, 20 years before that happened. So 
you know, but you don't really know how somebody is to the rubber meet the road. When she moved in with her, that's how she got to figure out and start to see how this woman was changing. And then a lot of times, you don't know why people hating on you or acting crazy or funny towards you, but that ain't your business. When she told me that lady was acting like that, I said, get out of her house. We're going to pray for you to get an apartment. You got to get out of her house. Because from that point on, I did not trust her. I told my sister, I do not trust her. I don't care. I know y'all been friends a long time. But something don't sound right. Something ain't right. So we praise God that when you are, when you do, when she did acknowledge it, she did something about it. She got up out of there. Because there ain't no telling what that woman had going on. Uh, she, We definitely know that was a spirit of depression over her. So we don't even know what this woman really was battling. And we know a lot of it was spiritual. So this is why you don't need to be caught up and tangled up with people. Amen. That you really don't know. All right. Anybody else? Um, I just want to say, I just want to give thanks and just, um, you talking about accepting, um, criticism. And I just want to thank God that I do have the obedience to, you know, allow yeah. that, allow the teachings, you know, even if yeah. I don't say it right then and there, like you said, I, a lot of times I'm like, you know what, um, that was right. Um, it's just self-evaluation, especially spiritually. Um, mm. so, and then another thing that I have been told, because right now I feel like for a while during my season of, um, teachings, I've been not vulnerable, like weak vulnerable, but more sensitive to the fact that I have to protect my surroundings, um, yeah. um because I am in a vulnerable state of his teachings. And mm -hmm. I have learned um, bound, have having boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been like a people pleaser. Like mm -hmm. I've always wanted to please people where it'll come, it'll affect myself. But I've learned to draw them boundaries where yeah. when I feel like someone else's situation is coming into me and I'm getting more depressed due to their situation, I know how to cut it off. It's like I know the beginning stage is to say, okay, um, let me step back. Or if I'm not um feeling well, not to answer the phone mm -hmm. until I'm able to, you know, mm -hmm. allow someone else's situation to handle mm -hmm. someone else's situation. And also just putting myself, not putting myself in um certain situations. And I thank God for the discernment to have that to yeah. like, okay, well, you know what, this person is in this type of activity, you know, just by their actions and kind of not think I'm better than them or um, I don't love them, but it's just, okay, I cannot be involved in that or be around that. Amen. Do that at a, you know, just a limited time if I have to, it's only right. limited. And then right. I have to go back to my, my sanctuary because I don't That's want it. someone else's. And you have taught us that. Yes. Um, even when, you know, you blessed out our homes where we had prayer that night on mm -hmm. Thursday, you had everybody go around their house with the holy oil. Mm -hmm. I don't yes. like a lot of people in and out of my house. Right. My kids know even friends. Like, I like a selective few because I do believe in spirits. Like, it yes. could be on them and then they yep. come in your house and they jump yep. in your house, your kids, on you. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I just want to speak on that part. Um, and I've actually been trying to live stand on that and um allow that to be part of my journey. Um because I you have to watch who you're around because these spirits are real now and it's they becoming so bold that yes. they don't care if they being seen or not. No, nope. and it, 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 they used to be more the enemy used to be more discreet of his demons or who he had on put not no on more earth to jump up not no more mm -hmm. like you actually can start seeing these demons and these people yes. and just by these act of their actions so yep. I just want to thank God for giving me you know opening my eyes mm -hmm. um, and allowing me to be more aware of when yeah. I feel like a certain I need to be away from a certain individual or a certain mm -hmm. situation he removes me or he prevents me from being a part of that so, that's right that I just want to touch on that. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
that's all I had to say about, you know, my own personal experience on the bird. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Yes, because like uh, Shakia just said, did, did, I'm telling y'all, these demons, honey, they not playing. And they not hiding no more. They used, like she said, back in the day, you know what I'm saying? They was on the download. They ain't on no download no more. They up close in person. And if you don't know how to deal with them, they will pounce on you. Okay, Monique, um, did you want to um say something? Okay, she might not be able to talk. Did you you talking to me? Yes. Yes, um, to God be the glory. Um it's it's because I'm driving, it's kind of spidey. But Okay. Um, you know, to God be the glory. I thank God for this um message and one today. I tell you, and it, it has come to touch my life. Every it's like every time the word come down, um, I can see myself in this word. You know, I just thank God, like I said earlier, for each and every tool that we we are learning here on village. I thank God for showing us how to combat all these things that life may bring. Yeah. And he's placed our feet over here on the path of righteousness and given us the tools that we need. So to God be the glory on today. Um, y'all that know the words of prayer, y'all keep me in prayer. Um, and I thank God for each and every scripture and, and, and for traveling road verses and and for just being the, you know, head of my life. Because yes. I tell you, I would have never known these things. We were not taught these things in a building. We were Amen. not taught how to combat, you know, um, they talk about rebuke, but they don't explain to you how to do it. You Amen. understand me? And I've actually seen it work in my own life. I've yes. seen these tools work. So I'm just holding on to God's so unchanging your hands. I thank God for the reading of the word that went forth on today. And um, I thank God for just letting me know, yeah, you can make it through this. So y'all yes. that know the words of prayer, y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. To God be the glory. Um, we are grateful that we are learning so much here on this here Zoom. Um, I, I don't know if I've told all of y'all, but most people know that um, the majority of my knowledge came from the Holy Ghost. He gets the credit, not a man. Because although it was men that, you know, coached me, uh, well, it wasn't many, but it was... Uh, women women of God and men of God that I follow their ministry, some in person, some not. But nevertheless, you know, nobody has coached me and steered me and guided me and shared more with me than the Holy Ghost, okay? Um, and I took everything that those men and women of God offered me. I took their good counsel. I took the instruction and I used it. I applied it to my life. And I started seeing things changing in my life. I see, I started seeing things really working for my, for my benefit. For and and I said, this stuff really worked. You understand? If you just follow the word of God, it really do work. So um that part of it came from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I did not never know that. Sitting in the church, I was just never known that. Nobody was teaching them like that. Nobody was even talking about stuff like that. Okay. So um, it really work, works from the spirit of God. I trust the spirit of the Lord more than I trust any man on this earth. So I know that what he's telling me and leading me and guiding me to do, I'm going to get the victory if I follow his lead. Amen. And I'm going to say that's the difference. That's the difference between a real, you know, leader of the Lord, a servant of God, because you always have to follow the, the spirit of the Lord, even over yourself. You have to listen and follow what the Lord says to do. No matter what it looked like, no matter what people are saying about you, imagine all the prophets, if they had to just listen to the, what man was saying, imagine where their lives would have went. You know, they would have never fulfilled the mission of God, what he called them to do. Because you would let a man's opinion, you know what I'm saying, derive you, stop you from doing what God has called you to do. And you can't let no man stop you from doing, from reaching your destiny and, and fulfilling your call. Everybody up here, like Peter said, God has something for us to do, every one of us in the kingdom of life. But if we can't get our own little personal life together, 
where we can have our own atmosphere, create our own atmosphere for the Lord. And when you create that atmosphere for the Lord, the Holy Spirit is welcome. He comes to visit you. But if it's always chaos going on around you, always cussing and fussing, disagreeing, uh, the, the uh, hot temper people, depression, Oprah, if it's all, all constantly, he's not going to visit you. Point blank, period. Amen. So we want to make it conducive for the spirit of the Lord to come and visit us. Uh, BJ put another prayer. I'm going to read this real quick because we got to get off by 1.30. Um, oh, loving Lord, if I see wrong or don't agree, I get angry sometimes or even seek with rage. Why do this happen? Why am I so resentful? I, th I thought I just read this. Won't you help me? Forgive me, oh Lord, for hurting and condemning, even if just in my heart. I look at the sin of others while a plank blinds my own eye. Show me, oh Lord, the root of my reaction, my hate. Show me where it all began and free me from that hurt. Heal my history and my heart. Help me to forgive. Cast out any spirit that tempts me to look upon others with hate instead of compassion. I have no right, O oh Lord, for I am a sinner too. Let your mercy guide me and may the joy of my salvation be my message to all. For you alone are holy. You alone are the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen. All right, thanks again, BJ, putting that back up there. All right, villagers, I'm grateful everybody came out. Now, I remember last week, on last Sunday, I asked you guys to meditate, start doing more meditation on your free time. Did anybody up here practice more meditation for the, the week? Hey, last man, week? I sure did. Hey, it was wonderful. I loved it so much because I tell you what I do is um, I was asking the Holy Ghost to wake me up early without the clock. And he he came through like I'm telling you, he came through like water through a pipe. Look. I started waking up like around 2 and 3 a.m. And then I got on my knees and I just started saying some prayers. And then what I'll do is what I normally do after I pray, I'll go to sleep. But this time I kind of stayed up and I kind of just listened and kind of and I did. um, I did receive some good instructions and I followed them and I got results. And, um, you know, and um, I just came into his his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. And I tell you that meditation piece right there, it was just wonderful because it helped. It even made my day smooth. You know, like yeah. a lot of times I remember my whole days was like, it'll be all these little stuff trying to come and get in the way. I tell you, I couldn't believe. I I, I still tripping about how smooth my day was. It was like a butter day, like. Mm -hmm. Like my whole day was, I was just gliding through the day smooth like butter, like butter mm -hmm. on a toast. Mm -hmm. And I did that. I, I'm going to keep on doing it. That's not, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's just good because I had been doing it a while back. I kind of got caught up. But when I brought it back to the focus point and listening to the Holy Spirit talk, and I'm telling you, I got plenty of good results in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And the answer processing, some answer prayers. It's some things that happen that it, it just amazed me. Like, mm -hmm. I, it's man, I tell you, it was the best thing that the Holy Ghost was saying to me at this time recently and I appreciate yeah. that and then you you giving it to us too you know and I just thank God for that focus is the best focusing on God and his word and what he's saying amen it's just so amazing it's important it's important it's, yes it's like a, a strategic um it's a weapon yes you know cuz you know you're not let stuff just get you like um you know, by surprise, you know, the enemy going to come and try to hit you, but you already been focusing. God already give you a heads up. Right. So you, you know what to do. You mm -hmm. know what to do and you know what the scripture to put on it. So and then Amen. the Holy Ghost is just sweet. You know, I turn all in the morning. It's good because no distractions. Everything's real quiet. Everybody sleep. You don't hear yeah. no cars, no horns, no. I mean, I'm telling you, I. It's just been wonderful to focus on God and his goodness early in the morning, real early. And then throughout the day, too. You know, I'll, I'll put out, if I have a chance during the day, I'll just focus on him. Just give him like 15, 20, 30 minutes and just put some word on some scriptures and read, mm -hmm. read something. You know what I'm saying? And it just, and, you know, Daniel, 
Daniel was right. I'll tell you that three times a day, boy. And um, spending that time is just focusing on the Lord. Amen. And, and Jesus was showing us too. He said he'd go somewhere and leave everybody behind and go go up somewhere. And, you know, so it's 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 been wonderful focusing on him. Amen. And he let me know that he see what I'm doing. <laughs> I thank Amen. God for that, that the Holy Ghost giving you that to give it to us. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Very crucial. Everything I give y'all is coming from the Holy Spirit. This ain't Kimmy. This ain't something I just sat down and said, whoa, I'm going to tell him to do this. If I don't get a word from the Holy Spirit, normally I'll just do an exercise or something, but uh, I'm always getting a word from the Holy Ghost because he's my best friend. All right, now, um, Shakia, I do have some instructions for you. I want you to um, put on... Um, Praise and worship in your husband, where whatever room he's at in the house. Okay. Put on praise and worship on that TV. They have it on, you know, you could do it on the um, what's that thing called? Um, the smart nothing. What the, what's that thing? Pandora. Called? Something. Yeah, whatever it is with the music. Um, put some gospel praise and worship. Not, not, you know, Kurt Franklin. I'm talking about some worship music, okay? Mm -hmm. Put some praise and worship on. Clear out that room where he's at. You want all of that energy to be, we want all of the uh, positive energy to come to his room, okay? This okay. is how you draw the spirit of the Lord. So you have to put on that music, let it clear out that that atmosphere, okay? That room, the okay. air. And keep that going. And then before he goes to bed at night, I want you to put on Psalms 91. Okay. Okay. I want you to put on Psalms 91 um, and let him sleep, sleep, put, you don't got to blast it, but you know, put it on where you can hear it and then put that music on every day, clear out his environment where he's at. Okay. okay. We want the spirit of the Lord to engage. We want the spirit of Holy Spirit to be welcome. We have to welcome the spirit of the Lord in our surroundings. Okay, so you want to clear out, and that's how you clear out the airways. You clear out the airways uh, with praise and worship unto the Lord, okay, almighty. Saying the Lord's name in your house, um, giving him, you know, having scriptures, you know, in, on the wall. Like, you know, I have plaques in my home, you know, with, with certain scriptures, you know, and it just has to represent the Lord Jesus, Yes, we have one up above our um headboard. Um that we have so I have scriptures around the house, but I need to get some more, especially this Psalms ninety one. Yeah. Try to find something with Psalms ninety one in the plaque and put mm -hmm. it up in your house somewhere. And then, you know, like I said, keep that praise and worship music going. And then at nighttime, play that song um um Psalm ninety one. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah, Tia said YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Okay, yeah. Thanks, Tia. Tia's always on it. She's my little good little student. <laughs> she always on it with her comments. All right. She be paying attention. All right. Everybody's good students up here. All right. So to God be the glory. Um, we have claimed that victory in Jesus' name. Keep me updated, Shakia, on his progress. And then um Everybody oh, make well. sure you're praying your homes out periodically. You got to do that at least once every other week nowadays. Go through your house and just pray it out, pray it out, pray it out. Tell all negative, bad energy, all you old unclean spirits, get on out of here in Jesus' name. Clear it out, clear it out. And then this will keep your, this will keep your atmosphere open and conducive for the spirit of the Lord. Okay, somebody go ahead and give us our benediction for this thing turn off. Make sure we will be back up here on Tuesday. Bible study is back on. And Thursday, Shakia, you make sure you try to be here on Thursday for prayer. I will. All right. All right, Father. Thank you, Father God, for today, Lord. Forgive us for our sins, known and unknown, Father God. Everyone that, that we had committed, um, just, or even just the ones just like somebody else, 